An official of Loristan's cultural heritage, academics of the handicrafts and tourism organizations, announced the discovery of an ancient yet highly elaborate ancient clay water transfer system akin to an ancient aqueduct found in incredible condition during excavations in Borogir, according to a report by Mir News Agency. Irrigation systems are yet another area of still existing features which can be found to be indicative of an ancient yet highly advanced constructor. These irrigation systems, according to academic fallacy, were created by civilizations with far inferior knowledge of sewage and irrigation than modern man. Thus, the construction of any systems should of, its matching with mainstream timelines, have been of a primitive nature, with their knowledge of building said systems in its infancy, and any claimed culprit within permitted history was also far less equipped than us today. Yet alas, regardless of these obvious factors, thus, supposedly, on their first attempts, got them perfectly right the first time round. They did such a good job, in fact, that many systems within Peru in particular are still in use to this day. These supposed soft metal wielding ancestors within our own post Ice Age permitted history being claimed as the original installers of these perfect systems. We perceive such attempted postulations as an insult to those with intelligence. Furthermore, our investigation within Pompeii, for example, Although we have also often covered advanced knowledge within metallurgy in the pipe works, having tin pipes for drinking water, yet lead for sewage, such awareness, such accomplishments, Pompeii is truly an astonishing ancient site. We also covered the sewage and irrigation systems built to withstand an enormously larger population than would ever be accepted as having once before us been possible. Yet the fact that these systems were built to withstand and are still used within even today's heavily populated towns is an undeniable reality. In regards to the rather beautiful system, unearthed in Iran, however, has predictably thrown a few surprising and for some individuals tasked with upholding current paradigms, rather uncomfortable controversial features surrounding its construction and the precision of its past function. The official Hojat Yar Mohammadi, tasked with investigating the elaborate and simply exquisite surviving example of the abilities of the ancients in regards to water manipulation, the official said that the ancient aqueduct includes a quote, smart water distribution system and was part of a historic castle. This quote, smart water distribution system, is only mentioned by this funded academic due to the public exposure the site has successfully experienced, and anyone with experience in such fields could indeed identify these truths themselves. However, no so-called official or any funded individual or institute for that matter will ever accept a drastic alteration in man's chronology. The clay pipes, known as Tampushe in Farsi, once transferred water for an ancient castle's garden. According to the official, clearly impressed with the advanced nature of the find, the big clay irrigational pottery distributed the water and removed the mud as it functioned. An incredible feat for the time, the system is claimed to have been constructed within. The system minimized the risk of blockage in the flow of water. Yet what stood out about this old system to him the most was its optimal use of water resources. Who built this incredible clay watering system? When did they build it? How did they have such advanced knowledge and abilities in regards to water manipulation? A simple garden watering system from a few centuries ago? Or a once submerged, unearthed, loved and maintained artifact, once again submerged, yet thus, when we have unearthed it yet again, found to be a marvelously preserved artifact, surviving into our age? possibly originating from a lost civilization? We found Burojard's aqueduct and the subsequent discoveries of its incredibly advanced features highly compelling. There are many ruins of ancient antiquity still in existence which tell a vastly different tale for the history of human civilization than that of its contradictory counterpart, namely modern paradigm. One enforced, funded, and massively supported a tale of events merely written by a victor. However, 
Thanks to our ancient ancestors' incredible abilities, many of their ruins and relics so well constructed, often made from complex, elaborate, or gigantic materials, can tell us all what a well-funded modern academia simply cannot explain, thus is staunchly rejected and ignored in favor of the illusion of an authority over our species akin to that of an oracle. One of the most popular and predictably easily argued of ancient sites for our case of events, our conviction in the belief that there is a hidden history of man and indeed Earth, one of a far greater antiquity for our species, with many now lost civilizations having once come and gone. The site is additionally one of the largest ancient anomalies of our planet. It is, of course, the Great Pyramids of Giza. Due to the structure's immense sizes, the evidence for several conservation efforts in the form of casing stones littering their four-sided facades. The sheer size of the stones involved in the build, the amount of stone used, the precision of the once hermetically sealed, constellationally aligned ventilation shafts, and the many different stages of erosion present on these varying sections of the construction efforts, indeed, makes the Great Pyramids a great avenue of study, and one of strong conjecture in the face of an adverse and conspiring academia. Our hypothesis, we feel, due to our compiling of the many inexplicable factors of antiquity, has now all but been virtually proven beyond doubt. For our opinion regarding the true history of Earth is not just based upon the objection of the illogical explanation widely given for the origin of the pyramids of Egypt. It is also based upon many other areas of ancient history, which not only support our claim, but if one sticks to mainstream historical ideology, will simply find the task of explaining these ancient uparts simply impossible. They simply cannot exist. And our next artifact of interest is no different. Like King Tut's dagger, the Beth Shearim glass slab, Found in Switzerland by amateur archaeologists, it is known as the Hand of Preels. Not only is it the earliest, most elaborate example of bronze and gold work ever found, but, quote, we do not know either the meaning and the function attributed to it. Its gold decor suggests that it was an emblem of power, a distinct sign of the social elite, even of a deity. The hand is extended by a hollow form, that suggests it was originally mounted on another object, perhaps as part of a scepter." End quote. Who made the Hand of Preels? Is it really 3,000 years old? If so, how can it be the earliest example of this form of metalworking, yet be so elaborate in nature? The Hand of Preels is unquestionably an ancient upart, and could quite possibly be a surviving relic of a once highly advanced yet now lost civilization. We feel this hypothesis is far more logical and as such makes the hand of Preels highly compelling.